Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can analyze the characteristics of Chris Kyle. Kyle was a Navy SEAL whose story was told in the 2014 movie American Sniper. Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first, I'll talk about the background of Kyle. I'll move to the events that led to his death, and then I'll review some of his personality characteristics. Chris Kyle was born in Odessa, Texas on April 8, 1974. He received his first rifle when he was eight years old and used to hunt regularly. He graduated high school in 1992 and became a professional rodeo rider but he discontinued that career after sustaining an injury to his arm. After going to college for two years, Kyle joined the U.S. Navy. He trained to be a Navy SEAL and was eventually assigned to SEAL Team 3, Sniper Element. Kyle would serve four tours of duty in the Iraq War. There he would distinguish himself as an excellent shot, so much so that insurgents put a bounty on his head. It has been reported that he killed about 160 enemies making him the deadliest sniper in U.S. history. Kyle claimed at different times that he killed somewhere around 200 or 300 enemies. In 2009, Kyle was honorably discharged from the U.S. Navy. In 2012, he published an autobiography titled American Sniper. The book was a New York Times bestseller. It stayed on that list for 37 weeks. Various people questioned some of Kyle's claims. One in particular was Jesse Ventura, the former governor of Minnesota. He had also served in the military. Kyle had written that he punched a man in a bar in Coronado, California in 2006. In January of 2012, Kyle went on a radio show to talk about his book and identified Jesse Ventura as the man that he punched. Jesse Ventura said that he never even met Chris Kyle, much less was physically attacked by Kyle. Ventura sued Kyle for defamation, appropriation, and unjust enrichment. In 2017, the lawsuit was settled with Kyle's estate for an undisclosed amount. This wasn't the only claim that Kyle made that aroused suspicion. He said that he and another man were sent by the U.S. government to New Orleans, Louisiana during Hurricane Katrina to assist with the civil unrest. He said that they were placed on the Mercedes-Benz Superdome and that they were carrying rifles, they used these rifles to shoot looters. Kyle claimed to have killed 30 looters. He had another story about an attempted carjacking at a gas station in Dallas, Texas in 2009. He said that he was approached by two men who wanted his vehicle. He told the men that he would reach into his truck and get them the keys. Instead, he pulled out a firearm and shot both of them, killing them. The difficulty with both of these claims, the one in New Orleans and the one in Dallas, is that there's no evidence that they happened. No witnesses, no reports of people being shot, no dead bodies, no video surveillance. It seems fairly clear that neither event actually occurred. In addition, Kyle had been awarded one Silver Star medal and three Bronze Stars for his service. Some reports say he was awarded four Bronze Stars, but he claimed that he was awarded two Silver Stars and five bronze stars. This takes us to February 2, 2013. Chris Kyle, 38 years old at that time, and a friend of his, 35-year-old Chad Littlefield, picked up a 25-year-old U.S. Marine Corps veteran named Eddie Ray Routh. Kyle was driving his Ford F-350 pickup truck. Kyle and Littlefield were taking Routh to a shooting range in Erath County, Texas, to help him cope with his post-traumatic stress disorder. Routh had spent time in mental health facilities. He was diagnosed not only with PTSD, but also with schizophrenia. During the ride to the range, Kyle texted Littlefield with the words, this dude is straight up nuts. Littlefield texted back, writing, he's right behind me, watch my six. After arriving at the range, Routh shot Kyle six times with a 45 caliber pistol and shot Littlefield seven times with a 9mm pistol, killing both men. Both weapons were owned by Chris Kyle. 
Kyle and Littlefield were both carrying 45 caliber pistols, but both of those weapons had the safety on. They were both in their holsters, and neither had been fired. After the shooting, Ralph took Kyle's truck to his sister's house and told her what he did. The police would later arrest him after he crashed Kyle's truck into a police vehicle. Ralph would later tell the authorities that when he was riding in the back seat of the truck, no one would talk to him. He felt bad about shooting them, but he was sure they had forgiven him. At his trial, defense experts maintained that he was psychotic at the time of the killings. One mental health professional for the prosecution said that Ralph was faking schizophrenia, and another said he probably did not have the disorder. I looked at the reports that were available about his symptoms. I think a good argument can be made that he was psychotic. There's no way to know for sure, of course, but he had a long history of hallucinations and delusions, and he appeared to be paranoid. Ralph was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole after being found guilty. Now moving to the mental health and personality factors. I'm not aware of any report indicating Chris Kyle was officially diagnosed with any mental disorder. In the movie American Sniper, it's implied that he may have had some symptoms of PTSD. For example, hypervigilance. There's the scene where he's driving his vehicle near where he lives, and he's anxiously looking around at other vehicles, worried about potential threats. The question that comes up here is, does this explain his lying behavior? Could PTSD explain that, or is it something more based on personality? Chris Kyle was an elite combat operator in the Navy. Navy SEALs need certain characteristics to make them effective. For example, they have to have reduced emotional reactivity. This trait aligns with psychopathy. Now, psychopathy isn't always something that leads to a bad result. Certain homicidal offenders have been psychopathic, but most people who are psychopathic are not killers. Psychopathy is actually helpful, if not necessary, to perform certain types of work. For example, surgeons tend to have higher levels of psychopathy. Nobody wants to be operated on by a surgeon who is jumpy. It would not be comforting to talk to a surgeon prior to a surgery and have them say something like, my hands won't stop shaking, or my anxiety is really skyrocketing today. Similarly, many elite combat operators have subclinical psychopathy or, on occasion, clinical psychopathy. The low neuroticism component of psychopathy allows them to stay calm and functional while engaging in activities that would normally be considered antisocial, but under combat conditions are considered necessary and prosocial. When people have higher levels of psychopathy, they tend to have narcissistic characteristics as well. Not always, but we usually do see some overlap. If Chris Kyle did have elevated levels of psychopathy, it would make sense that he was a bit narcissistic as well. Again, it just comes with the territory. In addition, elite combat operators often have high scores in two facets of extroversion, assertiveness and sensation-seeking. Sensation-seeking specifically can be quite dangerous. It is quite useful for combat effectiveness under certain circumstances, but it often leads to trouble in civilian life. This is something that we often see with elite combat operators. They do well in combat, incredibly well, but they cannot adjust to civilian life because it's simply not exciting enough. It's not stimulating. In a sense, they are chasing a high, but they're looking for a drug that nobody sells. It seems reasonable to believe that when Chris Kyle was not in combat, he was bored. He wanted the thrill of combat again. Perhaps a few narcissistic traits combined with this void, this unmet need, resulted in some tall tales. Kyle was a legitimately successful combatant, the most lethal sniper in U.S. history. He had a lot of reasons to feel accomplished about his career. Deception was not required for him to impress people. Another element to consider here, which also ties in with narcissism, would be an investment in fantasy. Listening to these two stories that Kyle had, the one in Louisiana and the one in Texas, they sound like a tough guy fantasy. Perhaps he wanted events like that to actually happen, so he simply said they did. His lies were not self-deprecating. He thought they made him look better. He thought perhaps he could expand his own legendary reputation, take it to the next level, reach another new high. 
Some people believe that Chris Kyle lost his hero status because of his deception. I think the deception probably came from the same place that facilitated him becoming a hero. With all this in mind, talking about psychopathy and narcissism and extroversion, what would be a potential personality profile for Chris Kyle? We see low openness to experience. He was conservative and had concrete thinking. We see mid-range conscientiousness, high extroversion, like I talked about, low agreeableness, and extremely low neuroticism. What lessons can be learned from the case of Chris Kyle? I have two here. The first lesson, people can occupy more than one role at a time, and sometimes these roles seem to contradict. Chris Kyle was a hero and also somebody who told several lies. The second lesson is about warning signs. Ralph's mother was the one who contacted Kyle for help. She wanted Kyle to help her son. She told him that Ralph had PTSD, but failed to tell him that he had threatened to kill himself and his family. This information would have been helpful. It's important to face reality when dealing with somebody who may be severely mentally ill. As I mentioned, Kyle and Littlefield were both aware that something was wrong with Ralph. I appreciate that they didn't want to overreact by doing something like throwing him out of the truck or something like that, but they should have reacted in some way. One idea would be, don't let Ralph have a firearm. Again, the guns used in the homicides were owned by Chris Kyle. My guess would be that Kyle thought the time out there shooting would be good for Ralph. I think he was genuinely trying to help him. Kyle probably trusted him because they both had been in the military. A little bit of distrust can be helpful under certain circumstances. Those are my thoughts on Chris Kyle. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.